Yo, VC, Kieran here, Needle Groove, back for another video on a roll here. Been making a bunch of videos, had split up my Boxing Day finds into three videos, and now it's my fourth video. Lots happening in the VC. It seemed for a while that in December, quiet, not a lot of videos, but now there's tons to watch. A lot of people starting to make video again, videos again. Jeff Glowing Cabbage, Fred. Uh, Anders in Stockholm made another video. Lots of people who I haven't seen in a while making some videos. So that's great to see. It's inspiring, it's motivating, makes me want to make some videos. Last night, Andrew Champ Sound showed this in his video, the new Wax Poetics that Fred gave him. And I just picked it up earlier that afternoon. I had been meaning to pick it up and kept forgetting. Anyway, so I picked it up and then he showed it. So it kind of clicked in my head. Wax Poetics, really big for me in terms of collecting records and discovering music. So I had had an idea a while back to make a video about Wax Poetics and show some stuff. Show my collection of the magazines and a couple other things that I have. So here that is. This is my Wax Poetics video. And Wax Poetics, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure most of you in the VC do. It's a publication, a magazine. Now I think it comes out eight a year. They put out eight a year, something like that. Anyway, it's amazing. It's really, really well done. The writing is incredible. A lot of interviews with old artists. A lot of features on old artists um, that may be dead. And just so much uh, knowledge there and good, uh, a great way to discover records that I never would know of otherwise, kind of like the VC. So before, it was my VC before the VC. It's a people who love records, love music, who put their heart and soul into this publication. And there's so much information there. I haven't read all of them or I haven't read them all front to back. It take me years and stuff you can reread. And it just makes you want to collect records and listen to music. So I was late to the game in discovering Wax Poetics. I think I discovered it around issue 29. I've since bought almost every one since. I might have missed some, I'm not sure. And I have bought some back issues. So if you don't know Wax Poetics, I urge you to check it out. It kind of focused, it was born out of, uh, from the crate digging subculture in New York. And that's where it's based, I think in Brooklyn. And the, the quality of the paper, the pictures, everything is just top, top notch. It's changed from the beginning. You can see a few different uh, variations in the style of the magazine, but it's kind of still has the original form a bit, it's just been modified. So I'm going to show you first two records. They, they also do some reissues as well as some original stuff. Some of you may know the Black Dynamite soundtrack that was a black exploitation, a recent modern black exploitation movie. I don't have that. The first Wax Poetics record I got was when I first started collecting records. I didn't have a lot. I was on a trip to England visiting family, took a day in London, and I went to this store called Honest John, some of you may know. And I came across this Wax Poetics record. I was super excited. I didn't know anything about collecting. I was like, I love Wax Poetics. Let me get this record. It was 12 pounds, which was at the time fine, but since I've seen, they used to sell it, they were liquidating it on the Wax Poetic website for $4 American, and I wish I had bought a whole bunch of them to give as gifts, but I didn't. But anyway, the record is this, Melvin Price, Rhythm and Blues, and I didn't have a lot of records at, at the time. I had kind of had a few from my, I inherited from my dad, and then I had bought a few, and this was one of them that I used to play all the time in the apartment. And it's, so it's jazz, but really heavy on the, the congas and the, the percussion. So there's moments where there's just percussion, a lot of moments like that. And he's from Pontiac, Michigan. If you get the LP, you can read a bit about him here. They have this kind of whole little story. So he's from Pontiac, but this was recorded in Sweden. It's a rel it was a relatively unknown LP in the U.S., but kind of a bit more popular in Europe. Here, I'll show you the, the label. And I love, love this music. So I'll put a link if there is some of the music on YouTube. This is Wax Poetics. That's what it looks like. Very basic label, which I like. And it comes with a nice insert with some reading. And a little backstory on Melvin Price himself. And this is Wax Poetics record number four. So 
this was early in the game when they started. And it has, uh, you got Melvin Price plays congas and trombone. You got John Dill, congas, uh, the other instruments, tenor sax, percussion, bass, con contrabass, piano, drums. This is great, great stuff. So you can find a copy pretty cheap, not an original, but you can find this Wax Poetics reissue, which is great. The second record I have on Wax Poetics is I got on liquidation from their website. I think it was $4.00. So I just pulled the trigger, didn't matter, four bucks, Wax Poetics. You know that if they're recommending something, it's going to be pretty good. And this is 9DW. So it's, this is also a reissue. It's a Jap Japanese kind of electro jazz fusion is I think how they describe it. Not really music I listen to, the style I listen to too often, but I really dig this. And it was really cheap. It says the art direction design by Steinsky. So this was, they put this one out in 2009. And this is very cool music. I enjoy it. Great to just put on in the background while you do something. And it comes on clear vinyl, which is pretty cool. And it's two LPs. No gatefold, but uh, two LPs, which sometimes bothered me. It's a little pet peeve of mine when they shove two LPs into one cover, but anyway, so that's 9DW on Wax Poetics Records. Everything they do is, is pretty solid. So if you see that around for cheap, definitely worth picking up. So like I said, I was late to the game in collecting Wax Poetics Records, uh, Wax Poetics well, Records as well as the magazines. And there's these anthologies they put out, two of them. One where they, an anthology of issues one to five, and then six to ten. So those early issues which are hard to get, they put out in these books, which I was able to get pretty cheap. For some reason, it's with Puma, but anyway. So this is, they go through and kind of highlight the, the, best, the best interviews and the best features. A lot of stuff like this you'll see. There you see Melvin Sparks. Um, they get artists to talk about, you know, DJs talk about records that were influential, or they just, they do these features of all these records, and it just, you can discover so much stuff. Um... So this has the features in the first one. You got Idris Muhammad, uh, Diamond D, Pretty Purdy, Clyde Stubblefield, uh, RZA, uh, Wild Style, Hip Hop's Building Blocks. So all types of amazing reading here. So much, so much to read and discover. And then I also have the second one. Nothing to show on the back there. So there you got just to show you amazing photos and really heavy on the reading. These ones are free of ads. The actual magazines have ads which some are really cool even just to look at the uh, the ads and you can dis discover some cool stuff. There's Melvin Van Peebles. So awesome stuff in here. Great way to catch up on what you missed. And these never get old. They're, they're collectible. The, it's not like a magazine that you just throw out. These are nice. You keep them and there's a lot to read and discover, like I said. So I'm going to show you quickly the ones I have, just because they're really beautiful. So you might want to shut up now if you don't care. But anyway, so the earliest issue I actually have is number nine. This is Joe Zavenu, I think you say his name. I never knew how to say his name, but... Um, I, there was a Cannibal Adderley live album where he says his name, and that's how I why I say it, Joe's Avenue, who we all know. So that's issue number nine. Then you have issue number eleven. This is What Stacks, I believe. Just beautiful, beautiful publication. So there, you can see the early ones are very different. You'll see than what the later ones are. So the early, early ones, there's kind of three stages. So these were all very similar. This is issue 10. And then issue 14 kind of started with, I don't know where they started, but this is kind of what they started to look like for a long time. Look at this. I guess this is a strata, or it just says East. And then you have October 1st, 2nd, 3rd, Pharaoh Sanders. Then you have Gary Bartz and the NTU Troop. Lee Morgan, after that, Eddie Gale, 
And then Charles and Myra Hunter plus Leroy Jenkins. That's the lineup for the live shows. Would have liked to catch that. A few weeks of shows. That's a whole month. Anyway, that's issue with David Axelrod. So a lot great reading there on David Axelrod. Great stories. One of my favorite artists, issue 16, Bill Withers. And then you have this awesome collage of all these record covers on the back. Also features here on Cut Chemist, Herbie Mann. Then it skips to 22, so I'm missing a lot of the early ones. You can buy some of them still on their website, too short. So if you're interested, you can go buy them. Some I bought a bunch of these for a couple bucks they were, that they had extra, and then some of them they sell for more expensive. I think the Dilla one, uh, you know, some of them you can't get at all. Issue 24. Mandrill. Another live concert thing. Photo issue, Miles Davis. Slick Rick. So this one's more about photography and different things like that. Photog music photography. Lots of good stuff in there. 27, KRS, and I think that's Eddie Harris. Not sure. 27, 28, Al Green, Q-Tip. So you see the, it's hip-hop, soul, jazz is kind of the main thing. And then they started to branch out a bunch. So 29, I think this is the first one I ever bought. That's Herbie Hancock. Awesome, and uh, Spoonie G, so jazz, hip-hop, always got along those themes. Then 30 was Rock Issue, you got Elvis Presley, so then they started to switch it up a bit, different features, this is Bad Brains. 31, Shuggy Otis, just so you can see the, the covers are awesome, and MF Doom, two artists that I absolutely love, love, love. Slick Rick feature, Sly Stone, Jimmy Cliff, Philly Issue, so definitely got Gam Gamble and Huff, Teddy Pendergrass, it's 33, Jazz Issue, John Coltrane, and this is Freddie Hubbard, love the colors on that, very Blue Note-esque. So I'm missing 35, I think. Don't know what that is, but that's too bad. 36, Brazil issue. So just, an, like I said, an incredible way to discover music. So much here. This one they were selling for more for a while. The MJ issue, you got, I think this was just right after he died. Got that. 38, Curtis Mayfield. A lot, of, a bunch of them, they'll put out two, two different covers. This is one of them. There's, I think there's even three. There's two different colors of the Curtis Mayfield. I don't think I have another one, but you got, um, what's his name? Uh, Radio Rahim? I don't know, from uh, Do the Right Thing. Great movie. The Fela. So this is the Africa issue. You got Fela, and there's Tony Allen. I showed a Fela record recently. Ohio Players. Smokey Robinson. I think that was, did he die? Anyway. Ice Cube, Ice T. So this was a hip hop issue. KRS One, EPMD. So these are both 41. I got both because they were, you know, they sell for like 10, 12 bucks now. But they were selling a bunch of old ones for 99 cents, two bucks online. I don't know if there's any left. 42. I'm missing 43. Oh no, I think I know what 43 is. D'Angelo, Barry White. I think this is another one where they have uh, two covers. I think the other one's Erica Badu, the R&B issue. Oh yeah, I'm missing 43. See, I'm missing two since I started collecting. War. Sil Johnson. Detroit Techno, who is that anyways, Juan Atkins and Bohannon, so you can learn about all these artists and more, George Duke, 
George Benson, Weldon Irvine's, like before I knew about the VC, this is my source and it still is. They tend to focus more on new artists, current artists now, they do both, but there's more features on current artists. Earth, Wind and Fire, Ramsey Lewis. When I was first buying these, I didn't know about any of this music, which seems crazy, but uh, you know, I uh, didn't know. Didn't know. Nina Simone, obviously, I knew some of them, but some of the, and then Theophilius London, current artist. And then this is 49, Latin Issue, Eddie Palmieri, and Lowrider Oldies. So that was up to 49, and that was kind of, for their 50th issue, they did a big switch. Oh, they did a switch for their 50th issue. So I'll show you the newer ones. They switched the, they switched that up. So like I said, 14, I don't know if it was around then or just before, but this is what it used to look like, their logo. And then they switched to this. And then they switched to this. These two feel pretty similar in size and paper. This, they changed the paper a lot lighter. Still great quality, but not as book-like. And they made them a bit bigger. So more like a magazine, but still collectible. Still great quality. It's grown on me. At first, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I like that. But anyway, Frank Ocean. So this was 50th edition. They put prints on there. Then, see, Nas, Danny Brown. Then they did a feature on No Limit Records. Actually, the feature was on the production, Beats by the Pound. Very interesting read on that. Shabazz Palaces, beautiful. Flying Lotus, Sade. Jesse Boykins, RZA. Joey Badass, Big Daddy Kane, a lot of hip hop stuff. This is 53, 54. De La Soul, Daft Punk, Hiatus Coyote, Little Dragon, more recent stuff. Uh, Joey Watley, I haven't even checked out all this music. Janelle Monet. Action Bronson, CeeLo. See, you can see how it's changed a bit. Their features are more current artists. Kalila, and then they did a feature on Aaliyah. That's 59, which takes us to 60, which is the one we started with. And I am noticing a big difference in size there between 59 and 60 and I don't know if that's just because 59 yeah seems a lot thinner I haven't read this one yet if there's less content or what we'll see anyway check out Wax Poetics if you haven't the other two books I have which are also by Wax Poetics cover story and cover story 2 I don't know which one's 2 anyway these are all obscure record covers. My pile's getting big on the table here. So I like books like this, great coffee table books. If you don't know Wax Poetics, check it out. That's it for now. I'll be back with another video at some point with more feature on records. So you may not have cared about these Wax Poetics, but I love them. I'm buried in them right now. So. Peace. Thanks for watching. Take care.